Hi guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to get to watch me work on a portrait piece that uh, I did for a good friend of mine. It's actually a memorial piece. And I was experimenting with open uh, acrylics by Golden, which have a longer drying time. And so uh, you're going to get to watch me mess this piece up and fix it and mess this piece up and fix it until I ended up with something that I was pretty proud of. So enjoy. Random art tips and rambles with Rafi. Hola, you amazing artists. It's Rafi. And Clee. And today we're going to answer a question about... Breaking big, into the art show world. Yeah. Art show realm. Big art fairs. Big art fairs. Yeah. Our question comes from Rajmi. And Rajmi's Instagram is Rajmi's underscore art. And Rajmi watches our YouTube vids. And the awesome question we have here is actually four questions. So I'm going to read off the four questions. And then we're going to tackle each question one thing at a time. Okay. Sounds okay. good. So Rajmi wants to know, first of all, thanks for sharing your experiences with us through your videos and other means. It always helps to keep us positive. I usually listen to your videos when I paint. And these always connect with our different situations. Aww. Thanks, Rajmi. Thank you. I am an initial level artist and a software engineer from India, and I started painting two years back. Now I have a good collection of paintings, and I want to exhibit it. I want to be a full-time artist, and I want to make it something really big. So the four questions are, at this level, should I start exhibiting my art in art fairs events which are being organized at a national level every year in my country or across the world? As per my experience, these national shows and events get the crowd to which we want to share the art, but the charges are very high, like $900 to $1,000. Also needing to pay for transport, hotels, visa if exhibiting in other countries, right. airfare, etc. Is it worth it? Should I go for it at this level? Second question. Where can I get schedules for this type of art fair, which are being organized worldwide? I tried to Google it, but I could not find much info. Third question, I approached a few organizers of said big art fairs, but they don't allow new or old artists to exhibit directly. They entertain only big galleries, and these galleries only allow big names. What should be done in such cases if I wish to exhibit in different countries? So basically the whole loophole of like, you can't get into right. Art Basel without representation, but you can't get representation unless they know you, but you can't get known. And that whole right. Ouroboros of right. bullshit, as I call it. Yeah. Four. In a local market, I don't see that much of exposure for me, and it's like a waste of energy, money, and time. I get inquiries from known and unknown people, but they want paintings either free or for a very low price in, like, local right. local shows. Right. Okay, so question number one. Let's just go ahead and jump right in here. Okay. Uh, so at this level, meaning Rajmi's been painting for two years, so good collection of art, uh, but has not exhibited, uh, should... Should you just jump right in to doing these big, expensive shows? Now, the answer here is kind of y yes or no, depending on how you want to approach it. But I will tell you that that's not how we started. Right. We did a high volume of smaller shows. Yep. And one of the main reasons that we did it that way is because we didn't have the capital to get into the larger shows. We didn't want to take that financial risk. And we also knew that we had a lot to learn when it came to showing and communicating about our art. So we wanted to get our sea legs under us, so to speak. You get exposure in these smaller shows. Yeah. You know, because I, I'll be honest with you, when it comes to gaining exposure... Um, I was surprised uh, at the exposure that I gained uh, at the flea market. I was surprised at the exposure that I gained at small shows. I was surprised at the exposure that I gained in big shows. Like, and I'm not saying that like you get droves of people and it's a, a huge high exposure. It just means that like you never know who's going to come to that particular show. It's true. A lot of the great opportunities that I've been presented with in my career thus far have come from what you would consider smaller, more localized shows. Right. You have somebody that lives in the area who uh, is maybe somebody who's a really big collector of art and they just happen upon this place that is this small, tiny little market. And there we are and we get to meet that person and talk to them. Mostly, though, it wasn't for the exposure. 
it was for the experience. Yes. For the experience of showing the art, traversing the art world, uh, talking to different people. Getting and, comfortable talking about your art and who you are. Getting comfortable dealing with rejection, dealing with people coming into the booth or and rejecting our art. Like basically facing our fears when it came to publicly displaying our stuff. And yeah. so we were doing a show or a number of shows every single weekend. And they were all little like, uh, you know, for the most part, they were mostly like shit little shows. <laughs> Uh, but basically any, any opportunity that we had to, um, get our stuff out in front of people, we did that. Uh, and then eventually that started to lead to just a little bit more capital here and there and, um, getting into some of the bigger shows. And at that point it was our artwork that was paying for being able to get into some of the bigger shows. Yeah. Uh, but even, even that it was like working up. To a, a medium sized show and then a larger show and then we did a really high end show, right. you know, so like. It- and the biggest thing there is like, uh, I would never have had the confidence to even entertain the idea of doing some of the higher end stuff had I not done all the stuff that came before. Right, because you don't have the experience of the in and outs of doing a, doing a, a, a shit show you know like basically like setting up and you're and especially if you're like sitting there and it's one of those shows where like there's not a lot of exposure there's really not a lot of people and you're sitting there and you're like what the hell am i doing here yeah you know and like being able to deal with the emotions that are tied to that because uh, one of the things that a lot of uh artists uh don't understand is that if you get out there and you have a show and no one is paying attention to your stuff, uh, you're going to have to deal with the emotion of the tumbleweeds of what that's like because it is going to happen. And you deal with all kinds of emotional stuff when it comes to that stuff because like, you are sitting there feeling completely ignored. And for some people, immediately they're like, I'm never doing one of these open air shows again or I'm never doing one of these shows again. Mm -hmm. And not realizing that like all of that is part of the journey. Like, it is all part of the journey. Now, as far as, like, answering the question for him, I don't know. Really, it, really, it's up to you. You got to remember, like, I'm a big proponent of you blazing your own trail. Yeah. Now, the only thing we could tell you is, like, what we did. Right. And to add to this, I would say, uh, you know, you might be sitting there, Rajmi, saying to yourself, well, that's great, Rafi and Klee. You got experience with rejection and communicating about, but I want to bypass all that and I want mainstream gallery representation and I want right. them to sell my art. And that's entirely your choice to make. I think the experience points are invaluable. I would not trade my experience for anything right. else in the world. Has my experience gotten me into Art Basel or a big jewelry show of that caliber? No. Now, that's not necessarily the route that I personally want to take. I have a successful career, and I'm not going that route. Right. But I would add to that, if I wanted to approach a big, scary gallery, right, a big, scary jewelry store or something of that nature, I would feel a lot more confident now having done all the things that I had done than I would have with zero experience. Right, right. Because you've got notches on your belt. You've yeah. got experience. You've been doing this for 10 years. You are an experienced artist. You could be an experienced artist and not have shown any of your stuff. You could be working on art every single day of your life for the last 10 years. That's amazing. You you create a whole collection. There is a different approach to doing it that way then it because in that in that sense then you're kind of going by the old gallery system whereas for me uh i think it's important to understand that like your options are open Mm -hmm. for for now for the time being because i want the momentum of moving forward in art um i want to be i want to be out there showing my stuff talking to people doing the things that i'm doing because It doesn't mean necessarily that I'm taking a different path, that someday uh, I won't be showing my stuff in Art Basel. It just means that, like, I'm not trying to get into Art Basel. At this juncture. But with the amount of exposure that I've gotten. You just might. I just might. So, like, that's the thing. Like, my my whole thing was I want to be able to to support myself Mm -hmm. doing my art without having to rely on anyone else. 
Yeah, exactly. You want to have your own sail, your own wind in your own sails rather than trying to hitch on to a giant cruise liner that you're not sure where it's going. My biggest thing was being picked up by a gallery, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, then maybe a year later, the gallery saying, uh, you know what, we're not going to represent you anymore and realizing that I'd be, I would be exactly where... I was a year earlier. Starting from scratch. Starting from scratch. Or they want you to just continuously produce the same work. You don't want to. The relationship sours and then you're in right. that same boat. Yeah. Whereas, whereas at this point, if I were to have a relationship with a gallery, I know exactly what kind of relationship I want. It would be on your terms. It would be on my terms. Most definitely. Yeah. Uh, I think that there's a lot of merit in starting small. And some people want to mock that and say it's not real, you're not serious if you're starting off that way. But I personally feel there's a lot of merit, which leads into the second question, which is how do you find out about these big worldwide or national shows? And Rajmi, I have to tell you, and I'm going back to the smaller events, every worthwhile event or show that we've participated in has come directly from a person yeah, so word, like word of mouth. Yeah, word of mouth. So we've met people at various smaller shows that have done larger shows that have said from personal experience, this show was worthwhile to do. Yeah. Um. So that's how we have learned about everything was from people uh, yeah. meeting them places and at different events. I mean, there are different uh, sites. If you look up like uh, specific shows in Florida or you look at at different there there are different sites that you could look online to find like applications for shows and mm -hmm. things like that but um i i i just i remember putting together a list of uh shows that i had found online but the fact was that like all i was getting was the information from the showrunners yeah and so i had no idea if the show was any good so really the shows that we did end up doing were the ones that came from word of mouth because we got to talk to an artist or uh, just somebody that was at the show that saw our work and said, oh, you really should do a show here. Yeah. Uh, this is my hometown or this is where I'm from. Like uh, you should contact them uh, and see if you get into the show. And then at that point, at least we had a show name. And so it was just getting out there and and doing that stuff. Rajmi, you know, and I don't I don't know what uh, the situation is in your local area and I do I I I don't know what kind of shows you could do or if you could expand out to a different area. I do know that there are some big name shows that you'll you'll find that are like $900 a pop uh or a thousand dollars a pop and and stuff like that and get exposures in in that arena if you're anything like me it's almost like you don't want to jump into a show that you don't know anything about especially if it is a a high-priced show uh and i could tell you that the experience that we got as far as finding out about these higher shows was through doing some of the smaller shows because for the most part working artists have to show their stuff out there yeah. somehow some way so yeah. they they tend if there are any that we ran into a lot of artists that not only did like some of these big giant shows but they do the little ones but they also between. do like yeah little art walks and things like that the artists that travel around especially here in the states the artists that travel around to big shows uh will do pit stops and do smaller shows in between. Yeah. Because, you know, gas money and hotel expenses. Yeah, and exactly. Exactly. Um, and, you know, you get to then you get to hear firsthand, like, well, that was crap or well, that was great. And, you know, it's also the artist's personal experience for their type of work. So you have to factor that in, too. Yeah. Uh, what's a good fit for your type of artwork? I don't know if you have access to galleries easily, but... In my mind, it's not a bad idea to attend some art events, even some gallery events, get to know the people who are there uh, showing, get to know the gallerists and establish relationships that way. Yeah, I mean, you spent you spent the last two years creating a body of work. So uh, just just understand that, like all of that, going and attending some gallery shows, going and attending some shows and just seeing for yourself. And while you're there, you could talk to the artists that are at the show, especially if it's a show that you're wondering about. Maybe they have a $900 uh, ticket tab mm -hmm. that you're going to have to pay in order to get in. Um, you can communicate if you go to the show itself uh, year one and just see that as a research trip where you're 
doing some research into yeah. the show. And maybe making some connections because ultimately we're talking about people. Even yeah. when you're talking about Art Basil, uh, you're we're, talking we're about talking people. We're talking about people. And it's really all about making connections with people. Um, and I, in my opinion, coming straight out the gate, uh, not knowing anybody and being like, do you want to see my art or represent my art? Yeah. Most people are going to be like, I don't know who you are. So really it is about forming relationships. Yeah. So and, and and that's where going going to art gallery as openings a pa- and as things a like that. Just yeah. as a patron, getting to talk to people, getting to know people, getting to talk to the artist that created the work, you know, and forming forming friendships. Yeah, is the best way. It, it really is the best way. Word of mouth and forming friendships is really the best way to find out the information that you want. Absolutely, which leads me into the third question, which is the Ouroboros of bullshit of not being able to get into a show that's huge because they only take galleries and those galleries only take the people that they already know. And how do you break into that cycle? It's like trying to apply for a job where you need X amount of experience, but you can't get the experience because you haven't had the job. Yeah. (laughs) And, and that's again, basically what we just said is it it is about establishing relationships. Um, I'm in I'm in a Main Street gallery and we're not talking about a mega gallery. We're talking about a small town Main Street gallery. But uh, nevertheless, a gallery that wasn't easy to get into. And the way that I got into it was that I got to know the gallerist little by little and sort of made friends with him. Yeah. Uh, And so by the time I actually inquired as to whether he would have my pieces there, we were already kind of buddies, acquaintances. Yeah. And and a lot of and the way that that started was because we were doing so many shows that so many people in town knew who we were because we were everywhere. Right. You know, we we met so many people. We had met him at a show. Right. And we had forgotten that we had met him at a show, but he remembered meeting us. And like and that's. That's why I I cannot stress enough how important it was for me to face my fears and get out there and do some of these smaller shows because of the experience that I gained. They weren't great financially. They no, they were definitely not, not great, but I mean, you know, some sometimes I was surprised by what happened. In fact, there were some shows where I made money that I really wasn't expecting to make at that particular show. And then there were other shows where I was expecting to make money and I made zero money. Yeah, it's really kind of unpredictable in that sense. So it wasn't about it wasn't about selling the art and making money, although obviously we wanted to make money, which was the reason that we did so many shows, Mm -hmm. because then, you know, things added up little by little. But uh, it was more about. Uh, gaining exposure, meeting people, getting to know people in the art world. Obviously, if I'm doing a small art event, I'm going to meet other artists in the area and things like that. And the best information that you're going to get on the art world in your local area or uh, in what's going on is by talking to the artists that are at the show with you. And if you do enough of that, then people are going to start to say, wow, that Rajmi. Rajmi's everywhere. Yep. <laughs> we see you everywhere. And then people are going to start to know who you are and you're going to just naturally make those connections. One of, one of the things one of the things that I kept in mind back then is it's called the rule of 3 or 7, right? And the rule of 3 or 7, it's the reason that you see so many commercials of the, on the same thing uh is because essentially the way it works is if they see you 3 to 7 times um then they feel like they get to know you based on the experience that they have with you. And so uh, that's why repeated uh, viewings of you is important. Uh, either viewings of you, so like if you're doing a show and they see some of your work there, or you're in a gallery and they see some of your work there, or they see some of your work somewhere else, then it's that third time that they start to really, really recognize it when mm-hmm. they see it. And then it, after the seventh time is when it really, really starts to form as a memory for them. Yeah. So like that's that's something that I kept in mind when we were doing shows. I wanted to see the some of the same people at some of the shows. I wanted to meet new people and I wanted to just keep getting that exposure and putting myself out there so that people would start to recognize me because I knew it was going to take more than just one meeting for somebody to remember who I was. Yeah, they're going to be like, ah, you look familiar yep. for a while. I have um, two things to say Rajmi, uh, if you don't have a website, 
uh, having a website is always a good idea and having a business card with said website on it so that when you do start to meet people and you do start to make connections, you can give them your business card and you can have somewhere to send them that's not social media. Yeah. Because social media is loud and noisy and big. And if you just have a website that's about you with examples of your work and represents who you are, that's a great way. N- not everyone's going to visit your website. In fact, most of them won't. No. Nope. But people who are genuinely interested in who you are as an artist, as a person, will visit your website. Count on the fact that about 3% of the people that you give a, giz- a business card to are going to actually visit your website. That means that... Out of a hundred cards that you give out, only three of them might go and visit your website. But it's good to have it there because yeah. uh, it's it's a resume. I mean, it's space. It's like having a brick and mortar space these days. It's owning land on the internet, basically. Yeah, and which is why if you do have the business cards and you are giving them out uh, for your website, uh, don't treat them like gold. Give them out to everyone. Give them out to everyone. And the last thing that I was going to say is um, this whole this whole topic uh, can seem super overwhelming from where you stand, like trying to get one foot in the water. Yeah. Right. And that's why we're such big proponents for starting small. You don't have to do it that way. But I feel like there's a lot of value in that. Well, I mean, okay, so to that to that question, when it comes to like Art Basel and stuff like that, right? So if your I if your your sites are set on Art Basel, one thing that you have to keep in mind is that Art Basel is a festival for art galleries, right? And there are several big art festivals that are not necessarily for artists. They are a, a festival of gallerist Mm -hmm. right and so um those are definitely not something that you should set your eyes on because uh then what are you going to do approach one of the galleries that goes to these festivals every year and then basically work it you could try to do it that way if you want to straight out the gate would be hard when you go when if you go to the art basil website you'll get a list of the galleries that were there the galleries that showed the year before and usually they have a website and everything like that and you could try and do that um there might be success. I don't want to say that there wouldn't be success. You never know. Because you never know. But to me, it would be a little bit harder to approach it in that way. Uh, also, Art Basel happens here, happens in Miami. Usually while Art Basel is going on, there's all these smaller independent galleries and co-op galleries and 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 little festivals that go on in the street. So that might be something to look into. Now, I've never really seen anything that looked attractive to me for doing Art Basel, so it's not something that I've I've actually been interested in doing. But I do know that artists take that route, i.e. I'm going to do the smaller show down the road from Art Basel to pay my expenses to get there and then go to Art Basel yeah. as a patron yeah. to try to see what's what. Yeah. So that that's a possibility. It is a possibility. I mean, the other the other thing I would say is remember that when it comes to these shows, right, you want to you want to realize what position you have, right? So you are an artist. So the idea of getting into Art Basel is all fine and dandy, but in order to get into Art Basel, you're going to have to follow the 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 rules of the art world that are guided in the art world, which is like you got to get into one of those galleries. And in order to get into one of those galleries, chances are you're going to have to put some notches on your belt. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have to get started somewhere. Right. Right. In my mind, um, I would much rather get started just doing my career and and forming it little by little and getting the experience, not so that I could get into Art Basel, but so that I could feel confident in my career. So that when I am dealing with one of these galleries that gets into Art Basel, that I'm able to negotiate my own deal. And not only that, but if it's a shit deal, I'm willing to walk away from them. Absolutely. And you only really gain that confidence through experience. Yeah. Now, it's, now, what the experience is, I'm not saying you have to do shows. No. Uh, you know, you did, like, like I say in my book, you know, blaze your own trail. Figure out what you want to do, how you feel comfortable doing it. Um, what is most important to me is that you don't uh, put yourself second and put someone else first. 
Uh, and what I mean by that is that you don't compromise who you are in order to get ahead. Right. That That's ultimately what it means to me when you blaze your own trail. You basically do things on your terms and you decide what it is that you're going to do. Now, also, Rajmi, remember, this is just our opinion. We have a very limited experience when it comes to any of this stuff. The only experience that we have is our own in the art world. Absolutely. There are artists that have done completely different routes than us that have had success. And so it really is just our yeah, opinion. I know a few artists that have had complete success just doing online. Strictly online. Uh, yeah. I, I know artists who have had complete success just doing shows mm -hmm. and they've just stuck to the show circuit. Yep. Uh, and they make a living from that. And artists who are very successful who only do gallery representation. Yep. Uh, but even with gallery representation, you got to start somewhere. And you know what's funny, though, is that the the quality of life and the amount of work that they do, it's all similar. I think it all just comes down to like who you are as a as a person and, and what, you what it is that you want out of life. Um, yeah. And you have to figure that out as you go, because things that I thought that I wanted 10 years ago, I don't want anymore. Right. That, that changes. Yeah. So you kind of have to like let that evolve, too. So start somewhere. Start where you can. Start wherever you can. And if that means right now what you can do are smaller shows to get your toe in the water, uh, maybe try doing that. Or if you're absolutely not for it, then figure out what does work for you. And as far as like people wanting things for free or anything like that, uh, here's my, my advice in the beginning because I, I had something similar happening in the beginning. And basically what I realized was that the people that wanted free stuff, they were not, not my people. I, I appreciated the fact that they liked my work, but I did not want to give my work away for free because I wanted to make money mm -hmm. with my art. Um, and understand that not everyone that goes to these shows, you can't label an entire group of people that go to a show. So what I would remind myself was it takes one one person. So no matter how crappy the show was going, no matter how uh, much I was being ignored, no matter how much I wasn't selling, no matter, no matter if I had a bunch of people try to lowball me on the price, I would remind myself, it just takes one. It takes one person to come in here and make my day financially, emotionally, whatever. Mm -hmm. And whether it happens at this show or at the next show or at the next show, it just takes one. And so that that really got me through some of the tougher shows that, yeah, that I was doing. me too. And you never know when that's going to pan out. Sometimes somebody that you met two years ago comes out of the woodwork with an opportunity. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's amazing to me. The more people that know about you and your work – the more opportunities you have across the board, because it might not be that person that you met. It might be that person that's like, so do you want to give this to me for free? And then a year down the line, he's talking to his friend who happens to be a promoter of one of the big shows. And is like, Oh, I, I, the, there's this artist that I met. He's really awesome. And then all of a sudden you get, you know, you get an opportunity there that you were not expecting. Yeah. So it's all about, uh, just getting out there in whichever way you feel comfortable or even slightly outside of your comfort zone, getting yourself out there and understanding that every single interaction you have is almost like a spider web increasing out towards the world. And the more people that you have interaction with, the more connection you have with everyone else in the world. And the more opportunities for connection. Yeah. Thank you for these awesome questions, Rajmi. Whatever path you choose to take, we wish you all the best. Absolutely. And uh, we appreciated having the chance to revisit these topics and have this conversation. We hope that you got something out of it, too. Yeah. Yeah, I really I really do hope that we had something uh helpful. Yeah, Rajmi, hopefully you got something out of all that rambling uh <laughs> about our experience cuz I mean honestly and that's the thing. I we don't want to bullshit you. We're going to tell you what our experience is. We're going to tell you what what we've experienced, what we've seen. Um but I'm I'm not going to uh make it seem like we know everything about everything that's going on in the art world. No, nope, because we certainly don't. No, the only thing that you could really uh, that I that I could say is that as you experience more and more and more, you're gonna really get 
a, a defined route for yourself that you're going to want to blaze yourself. Mm -hmm. Just get out there and do your thing because it's going to be awesome. I, I can't wait to see uh, what what you come back to us with in a few years after you've experienced greatness. Yes, and please do yeah. come back and let us know how things go as time goes on. And that's it. I'm curious to know if uh, you guys want to add any experience or your two cents uh, down below. That would be amazing. Anything that we could do to help Rajmi out, that would be great. And uh, thank you so much for listening, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to listen to more like this, just click somewhere around here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Quee. Good day. Adios. Adios.